All right, um, welcome back to Dilemma's Concept. So what you're looking at today is uh, KIP um, Unit 1, Module 1. We're at Question 1 of Paper 2, and we're at Part C. So we're going to be looking at Part C and Part D in this video presentation. All right, um, this question, Part C here, as you could see, is saying solve the inequality. Uh, we have um, the modulus of 3x plus 2 is greater than are equal to four all right so this is an absolute value question where we have the absolute value of 3x plus 2 and um 3x plus 2 and that must be, that must be greater than or equal to 4. in a question like this what we have to understand that the, this is based on the concept that abs, an absolute value is simply the distance from zero so this is suggesting that the absolute value must be greater than or equal to 4 but for um when we talk about an absolute value there is no negative or positive attached to it so you're going to realize that there's going to be two responses that we're going to have to be working on we're going to have to be working on the distance as you see here um between zero to positive four and we still would have to work on the units between zero to negative four uh, we're saying that this is going to be the clue that we're looking on. These are our two margins that we're going to be using to solve this problem. Bear in mind that we're going to have to um, understand how these signs are related and how we're going to have to flip the signs to handle this. All right. So here goes, here goes, here goes. All right. So what we want to do is to start off by setting up um, this first equation that we have. Um, we're going to have to remove the absolute value sign. So basically, we have two responses to work on. One, we'll say 3x plus 2 must be greater than or equal to 4. That's the first one that we're going to be working on. And we're going to solve this ordinarily. For example, we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. So 3x must be greater than or equal to positive 2 right there. And then finally, we're going to divide both sides by 3 divide this by 3 and then x is greater than or equal to 2 thirds that is just one of my response right because the absolute value um, this is the original one now we're gonna have to be working on the next one right so here's the next case so in the next case um, it's gonna be the same things that we're working with but we will have to now incorporate the negative 4 so 3x plus 2 we can't we're going to use negative 4 but because we're going to change from a positive 4 to a negative 4 we have to flip the sign so we're going to have to flip the sign this way in order to use negative 4. so with the absolute value we're just going to understand that if we're changing from a positive to a negative basically it's like we multiply by negative 1 and as long as we do that we have to flip the signs so the sign would have to turn the other way to sort out this so we're going to continue. We're going to minus 2 from both sides. So what we're looking at here is 3x uh, less than or equal to negative 6. And then we divide both sides by 3. Dividing that by 3, we're looking at x is less than or equal to negative 2. All right. So this is what our responses would be like. x must be less than or equal to negative 2, but greater than or equal to 2 thirds all right so basically these are our responses bam bam all right there we go so let's go to question uh once one d all right one d is a log question as you can see here it's a logarithm question and um the context in which we're gonna embark on this question though is that we are going to understand the fact that um when we see if I if, if if I have the log of a in a certain in the same base, say if I have base two, and I have the log of say b in that same base, it is equal to the log as a single base a times b. We're gonna embark on this idea. So this is gonna be the rule on which we're gonna start off, and then there are other rules that will be coming out as we go forward. All right. So let us start this problem. Let's start. So here it is. It says here that uh, I'm going to write this first. It says that we have the log in base 5 of x plus 2 
and then we have plus the log still in base 5 and we have x plus 6 and this is equal to 1. So we're going to employ one of the log rules right now. So we're going to write this as a single log. So we're going to be working in base 5 and then what we're going to have is x plus 2 into x plus 6 and this is equal to 1. And then we're going to step further. Next time we're going to step further and take it another step. This is logarithm and if this is logarithm, I must be able to raise a 5 which is the base to 1 and that is going to equal to x plus 2, x plus 6. And then I'm at a regular state. So 5 is equal to, I'm going to expand this, I'll get x squared plus 2x plus 6x plus 12. So when I expand that, I go further. 5 is equal to x squared plus 8x plus 12 and then we're going to go further again pushing this a little further we're looking at uh, let us subtract 5 from both sides let us subtract 5 from both sides then 0 is equal to x squared plus 8x plus 7 all right good so at this point, I can employ factorization in order to find the values of x here because I want to solve this. I want to find these values of x right now. So what I could do, um, I could just open my brackets, right? I could open my brackets and I definitely have plus 2 and a plus, hold on, in my bracket, not plus 2, plus 1. Sorry, I'll have a plus 1 and a plus 7 in my bracket. So if I should expand this, I'm going to get back this original equation here. So in, when we factorize it, we have x plus 1 into x plus 7, and this is equal to 0. Then we could say, guess what? Either, either x plus 1 is equal to 0, um, which means x is equal to negative 1, or x plus 7 is equal to 0 which means x is equal to negative 7 here um we can't just go ahead and submit these answers because it's logarithm and bear in mind the log of anything will never give a zero a negative one should say so the log of anything will never give us a negative one so what we're suggesting is we have to be careful here we want to make sure that these values for x can actually work out to be the positive because we can't find the log of a negative number we will not get any result so what i'm saying is you just want to take it to the side here and we want to say all right we're looking at x is equal to negative one x is equal to negative seven which one of those would have been appropriate for what we're dealing with here now let's let's go right here um if we should put if we should put let, let, let me, all right, let's look at this. If we should put negative 1 here, negative 1 there, and negative 1 there, you could see that these would be good. I'll have the log in base 5, and in this bracket, I'll definitely have 1, because negative 1 and 2 will give me 1. That's fine. And over this side, I'll have log in base 5, and then I'll have positive 5 there. So that means these are okay. Now, look at the other case. If I try this with say negative seven so let me pull on the screen a little bit i'm gonna leave that just to keep the seven on top so i'm just testing these values here because at the end of the day i'm gonna have to select so i know that x equal to negative one is good to go already let us try with negative seven if i put negative seven here this is gonna give me a negative five that can't work because i cannot find the log of negative five it's not possible and if i put negative seven here I'll definitely see I'm getting a negative 1. We cannot find the log of negative 1. So therefore, negative 7 cannot work. So in this, we'd have to submit that x is equal to negative 1. That is just the answer right now. All right. So when you solve these log equations, please bear in mind that you have to make sure that the answer you're submitting will actually work for real. So x is equal to negative 1. Thank you for watching. See you next time as we go through the next module. Thank you.